Well, this is it. X4004, big boy. The Union Pacific Railway had about mm, two dozen, maybe 25 of these built just to haul freight over the mountains. They were built back in like the late 40s. Let me get back here a little bit to get this in the frame. This thing is huge. It's 132 feet long, weighs 1.2 million pounds. This was the peak of steam. This is the first time I've seen one up close and personal. Now, right now, the Union Pacific actually has one of these hauling freight. They restored it, and it's actually out on the line today on a run. Isn't that amazing? Hauling freight with steam again. When I was a little boy, six years old, I had a Lionel train set, and the big boy was the engine on that train set. And I've wanted to see one ever since. This is the first time. I know Linda's short, so this isn't a really good size comparison. <laughs> no, seriously, look how small she is in comparison to this engine. These engines were so long that they were articulated, like an articulated bus to go around the corners or around the curves of the track. It was that long and needed to do that. Steam is amazing. Steam locomotives are even more amazing. The wheels are absolutely massive. They look to be between five and six feet in diameter. And remember, there's four smaller ones on the front, and then there's eight and eight, so 16 in the middle, and another four smaller ones on the back. Four, eight, eight, four. I'm gonna walk down the locomotive here and hold the camera over the top of the fence to give you an idea. This thing is massive. It's got to be 20 feet tall to the top of this boiler here. Imagine what a thrill it was to be an engineer on this one. Yeah, that's a big oil tanker on the back of this one. It's been converted for oil. But just to repeat myself, it just amazes the heck out of me that they restored one of these. By the way, they totally disassembled it. it took them years to restore it. And now it's out hauling freight on the rail lines. It's working for a living again. That, that amazes me. Yeah, it does. It's funny. Where we live, Great Falls, Montana, they have a penchant for putting airplanes up on poles. Sabre jets, F-104s, things like that. Linda says, if this was Montana, they'd put that up on a stick. <laughs> well, we've been uh, kept in place for a few days because of the transmission problems we had. But the car is working fine now, so we drove about 40 miles into Cheyenne, Wyoming, and we're here at the Cheyenne Depot Museum. I've been wanting to come here for quite a while. Today we're going to see it, and we're going to see some other things that you can visit in Cheyenne. This is in honor of the Iron Horse. You can see what it's made up of. Wrenches and spark plugs and nuts and bolts. 
This is known as the Grand Depot, and it was completed in 1868. This cowboy's just arrived in town. Ma'am, can I carry that bag for you? This is the entrance to the museum and store here. Well, this is the original depot waiting room, original flooring, original ceiling. Ceiling's been uh, retouched. The uh, chandeliers have been, uh, they were stolen at one time, so it's been replaced with the co exact copies of the originals. This floor here was uh, laid down uh, about 16 years ago, and the area that I'm walking on where this floor was, was the original newspaper stand, which was a very busy place back in the depots of the past. I remember traveling through the U.S. on a train when I was five years old, eight years old, 10 years old, and the newspaper stand was always a busy place in any depot lobby. Here's what that newspaper stand would have looked like back in 1948. I have to give you kind of a sideways view here because of the reflection. If you love trains, you're going to love this place, especially if you love steam trains. And this museum is extensive and detailed. It has two floors. These are chime goblets, and they were manufactured from the chrome alloy bearings taken from the wheels of a locomotive being scrapped. Each one, and it's made by a machinist, each one has its own tone. When I was nine years old, my father took me to New York to meet my great-great-uncle Harold, Harold Arms. And he was a surveyor for the railroad back in the days when you rode horseback. I remember him. He was a very tall, lanky man and lived in a telescope house, a small telescope house. That's the kind that had a living room in the front with a kitchen in the middle and a bedroom in the back and it was heated by a great big brown oil furnace that took up most of the living room. <laughs> I remember him, nice man, and nice to talk to him, long gone. That's my great great uncle Harold standing in the back on the, on the left. Hey, by the way, all of those children, except for one, belong to one man. If you look carefully at the photograph, you can tell which of those four men is the father of all those children. Look carefully. If you look at the gentleman, the second from the right, he can't afford a dress shirt and he's wearing a borrowed jacket. That's my grandpa, Eric. His wife in front, that's my grandma, Isabel. They were so different. Grandma was tall and educated. Grandpa was short. He was a coal miner, never did learn to read or write. And later on, when they were elderly, Grandpa called Grandma Lightning because she moved so slow. Oh, and by the way, my father is lower left. In Great Falls, I uh, had a friend stop by and had me come along with him. He went to purchase a motor car. It wasn't a Fairmont like this one. I don't remember the brand name, but we did a video on it, and I'll put the link below. How many of you are old enough to remember when passengers on trains and airplanes were treated with respect and courtesy? Oh. 
Oh, a tribute to the American hobo. How do you like that? As I said in a previous video, my father was a hobo during the Depression. Had a lot of stories to tell. <laughs> then just pointing out this wooden model of a big boy locomotive. Linda just told me that the wheels and the gears and the rods and everything on this wooden model all work. This looks to be about five feet long with the coal car in the back. My grandfather had a conductor's pocket watch. Conductors and the engineers, their watch was not allowed to have a cover on it. and It had to be easily readable. I wonder whatever happened to that pocket watch. And of course it had to be able to keep accurate time. This entire wall here is devoted to the graffiti. I can't get it all in, but it's all photographs of graffiti. Some of it's pretty, pretty artistic stuff. All painted on the side of boxcars and grainers and tankers and things like that. We're up on the second floor of the museum and it's dedicated to model railroads. If you're into model railroading, <laughs> this is quite the place. Now, there's uh, displays full of trains here. They're all behind glass. What a neat hobby, how exact. Different scale. And a different scale again, larger. This museum is incredible, and being in the original Grand Depot where you get to see all the woodwork and the stonework and everything. This is a must stop. It's uh, $8 admission and $7 for seniors and military. So walking out of the depot, this is what you would have seen. These are the original buildings here in Cheyenne, a little busier nowadays, but. Now Main Street is just one block down here. Let's go take a look at that. And there's a big Wrangler store right there on the corner here. Lincoln Way and Capitol, Cheyenne, Wyoming. Jeans and boots. And lots of other stuff here at the Wrangler store. I might just see another hat. A lot of real high quality clothing if this is your style. I love this stuff. I wear Wrangler pants and Wrangler shirts all the time. Well, Linda and I are just walking down to the corner to the Carl's Jr. for lunch. I see little electric scooters on the street corners where you just jump on and ride, but Linda, I don't think that's one. <laughs> just 10 minutes ago, Linda and I were in Carl's Jr. having lunch and this woman came up to us and she said, did you folks get your transmission fixed yet? 
Because if not, my son's a mechanic and he's ready to go out and help you. That's Wyoming for you. Very nice. Thank you, ma'am. I don't know who you were. I sure appreciate it. So Linda and I are cruising down Lincoln Way here in Cheyenne, Wyoming, and we see this sign that says, yeah, sushi and donuts. So she says, that's, that's an odd uh, combination as I'm turning the wheel to go back. <laughs> because after several days of dealing with a broken transmission, a little voice in my head said, yeah, that's right. You know, Linda and I have been through Cheyenne many times, and it's always like on the highway going north and south, or on the main uh, drags going through the uh, more modern parts of town, and we never really realized what Cheyenne was all about until today. We finally got into the core of Cheyenne and found out what a beautiful city it is, and yeah. talk about interesting museums. Uh, there's a, what's that cowboy museum here? The West Great Western Museum. The Great Western Museum, which we're not going to get to go to today. But this is a place worth visiting. Anyway, Linda and I are going to end this video right here and spend the afternoon just kind of enjoying the rest of the city to ourselves. Hope you enjoyed it. See, See you around.